When I say money market edges to people, they come out in cold sweats often, but they needn't do. Once you know how to do these, it's nice and easy. So I'm gonna talk you through my really easy to follow method where you just set up four boxes, work your way around, and you'll get your answer. It's just three calculations. Remember that and you'll be fine. Don't forget you're gonna to need to time a portion those rates more often than not. So remember to do that and go the right way around the boxes and you'll be absolutely fine. So let's enjoy this video and see how to tackle these money market hedges. What money market hedges do? These allow us to create our own forward contract effectively using the money markets. Now the money markets just mean borrowing, investing the banks essentially. And we're gonna invest and borrow in different currencies. And ultimately, you're guaranteed the exchange rate no matter what happens in the future. So we're locking into a rate. And you can think of this as pre-ordering your foreign currency at a fixed price. So we may have to pay a bit of interest, but we are then locked into this rate. So we've got peace of mind and we don't need to worry. Now, for money market hedges, I love these templates. Big fan of these boxes. So this is for a payment. Now with these, if you haven't seen them for a while, you might just need a quick reminder because they can be a bit fiddly. So if you've got a payment, what you're gonna need to do is deposit in the foreign currency and borrow in the home currency. So we've got a payment due. If you look at the top right there in box one, that's the payment that we need to make at some point in the future. So what we're gonna do is deposit some money in the foreign currency in a bank account ready to pay off that liability. So imagine we need to pay a million euros in six months time. What we're gonna do is put some euros into a European bank account ready to pay off that liability. So we're gonna start with box one and you put in there the amount we need to hedge. So that's the amount that we need to actually protect in the foreign currency. In box two, we need to decide how much do we need to deposit now so that when it grows and earn interest, it becomes that exact amount that we need. Because if we are hedging a million euros in six months time, we don't need to put a million euros in a bank account now because it will accrue a little bit of interest. So we need to put slightly less than that. So what we're gonna put in there is box one divided by one plus the rate. Now you notice at the bottom there, R is the relevant time apportioned interest rate. So you must time apportion it. These are unlikely to be annual rates. You need to time apportion them. Now to work out how much we need to borrow in order to deposit that, we're gonna do box two divided by the spot rate. And that will be the rate on the left because it is a payment, this question, assuming that your home currency is the base as always. So we do box two divided by the spot rate. And now we're borrowing in the home currency across that bottom row. So therefore we're gonna to have to pay interest. So our total payment will be box three times by one plus the rate. And that will tell us how much interest we earn on top, and that total payment will be our box four figure. That tells us exactly how much it's cost us to have this set up. Now, what's really important is it doesn't matter what the exchange rate is in the future. There's no link between box one and four, is there? So we've set up everything now. We know the spot rate, we know how much interest we're gonna earn on our deposit, we know how much interest we're gonna have to pay on our borrowings. We've arranged everything now, and we've locked into all those rates so we know exactly how much it's gonna cost us in the future. And that's what we needed to do. That's how we protected our foreign exchange position. Now, the good news is for a receipt, it's pretty much the same thing. The only difference then, if you look, it's a bit of a game of spot the difference. We're now borrowing in the foreign currency. So we're borrowing on the top and depositing in the home currency on the bottom. So that's the only thing that's changed. Everything else is the same. And in fact, the calculations are the same. You put the amount to hedge in box one. Box two is box one divided by one plus the rate. Box three, you just do box two divided by the spot. And then box four is box three times one plus the rate. So it's the same calculations. It's just you're now borrowing on the top and depositing on the bottom to protect against this receipt. Now the logic in that top row, you're receiving an asset in the future. so you'll be receiving some currency in the future. We're gonna borrow some money now, take out a loan, and then that'll accrue a bit of interest. And then when that receipt comes in, it will pay off exactly our loan. So it's a bit like 
You go on a massive shopping spree, put loads of stuff on credit card because you know that you're going to earn loads of money at the end of the month. You've got your wages coming in, so we're ready to pay that off. So you go on a shopping spree. It adds a bit of interest onto your credit card, annoyingly, but then at the end of that month, you can pay it off with that receipt. So that's what we're doing across the top. And again, the whole point of this, we are locked into all these rates, so we know exactly how much it's going to cost. Now, money market hedging is one of those things that you just need to practice. So if you're looking at all that going, oh, that's tough, that's perfectly normal. Again, some people will remember this from financial management. Some of you may not have done that for a while. It is just practice. And as I said, it's often just two marks in AFM and it's not all that commonly tested even. But we'll run through it and it is just practice. I actually find them really fun. I like just sitting on the train. I'll just sit there and do a money market hedge sometimes just, just to keep me entertained. And in this one, we've got Dion Co, who are based in the USA. They're due to receive XYZ 8 million in three months time. Now the foreign exchange spot rate in XYZ per dollar is 3.5460 to 3.5480. And on the right there, we've got the interest rates in the money markets. So we've got the deposit and the borrow rates in both XYZs and dollars. Now, really important, they are both per annum, that PA. So we are gonna need to time apportion them. And it says, calculate the hedged value of the transaction. So let's give this a go. Right, I've started by getting my little template up. I love these four boxes. It works so nicely for a money market edge. I do it every time. So I've put my deposit on the bottom because remember this is a receipt question. So important you do that. If it's a receipt, you deposit on the bottom and you borrow on the top. As always, it's the foreign currency on the top there, which is the XYZ and the home currency on the bottom. The first column, so in column C there is now, and then in column E, is the future, which is in three months time. So this one says we're receiving 8 million in three months time. So that's what we put into there. Right, as always, we start in box one and that's nice and easy. You put in the amount that we are set to receive. So we're set to receive 8 million XYZs. So we'll put those into box one. So that's our first number. Now what we need to do is we're gonna borrow an amount today that will then accrue some interest and grow to become exactly 8 million across the course of three months. So remember what we do is you do box one divided by one plus the rate. So I'm gonna do box one, which is this 8 million in E3, divided by one plus the borrow rate in XYZ. Now we can see from the question at the top right, it tells us that if we're borrowing in XYZ, we have to pay interest at 5.5%. So I'm gonna do that 5.5%, but don't forget, we need to time apportion it because it's only three months. So we're gonna times that by three over 12, like so. So that will then do box one divided by one plus the time apportioned rate. And if we do that, that tells us the amount we need to borrow now, which comes out as 7891. Now box two will always be a little bit less than box one. So just check that, yeah, great. Remember what's now gonna happen is that's gonna accrue some interest in box two and then over the three months, it will become exactly 8 million. We'll then receive 8 million from our customer and that will pay off our loan in XYZ. Brilliant. So we've now got a loan of just under 8 million XYZ. We can deposit that back in the US. So we can now deposit that in, into a bank account back in the US and earn some interest. So we're going to translate that at the spot rate. Because this is a receipt, we'll use the rate on the right. So it's going to be box two divided by the rate on the right, which is that 3.5480, like that. So that's the amount we need to deposit today. And because we're depositing money, that's now gonna earn us some interest. So we look at the deposit in the US rate, which is that 3% at the top right there. So we're now gonna earn interest at 3%. So box four is just box three times by one plus the rate okay, and we'll just pop some uh, brackets in just to be safe and it is the time of portion rate so it's three percent but don't forget that's over three months so effectively it's just over four isn't it like that and if we do that it ends up being two two forty so we just time apportion that so it's just box three 
times by one plus the time apportion rate, and that's come out as that. Now that is our answer, 2240. So that is the total amount that we are going to receive. Remember, it doesn't matter what the exchange rate now is in three months' time. So between box one and four, no problem. doesn't matter what the exchange rate is. We are all set up. We've agreed a rate today for both the borrow and the deposit. And we know what the spot rate is today. So we're all good. Um, and we've got our answer. So 2240, lovely. So let's think about some pros and cons of money market hedging. Firstly, you can just use the money market rates. So these are readily available. You can monitor those really easily. There's no premium or margin requirements. We're going to see those later with futures. You have to put down a bit of a deposit or maybe even pay an upfront fee. There's none of that, which is quite nice. And also they can be for any amount and you can arrange them for any dates. So they're quite flexible. They're bespoke to you as well, which is nice. Now, there are a few things we've ignored, and this is a good thing to mention just to show a bit of skepticism. There could be some tax implications. We are both earning interest and paying interest. So there could be tax implications in the countries in which we are either earning or paying interest. They can be quite difficult to arrange. You may have to set up a foreign loan and deposit back in the UK or the US wherever at the same time. So they can be quite difficult to arrange. And also there probably would be some setup costs involved. If you're taking out a large international loan, I'd imagine there'll be some legal costs involved. There'll be some fees that we've ignored as part of that. So there are a few more practical things that are downsides. And that's it. Thank you for watching this video. If you want more videos like this, where I break down those tricky topics into really easy to follow steps, then subscribe on YouTube. You can also follow me on LinkedIn for more exam advice and check me out on socials. I also have my own course helping students to pass their exams. Thanks for watching.